couple of days ago, I did a live call-in show, and the topic was the kind of the biggest concerns that Bulls fans had over the Bulls team going into the 2024-25 season. So I've compiled some of those in a list. We're going to talk about some of the biggest signs that people have or some of the biggest reasons for skepticism and what, if anything, the Chicago Bulls can do to kind of quiet some of that once the season starts. We're going to look at that. Plus, we're going to look at a list uh, from a Bleach Report article as far as teams that could be interested in trading for Tory Craig in the middle of the season. All that plus more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Derek Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, Let's go ahead and get into this content for today, y'all. And so I want to start it off with that reason, reasons for skepticism with the Chicago Bulls. And so, you know, uh, you know, in that episode, there are a lot of people who've either texted, emailed, left comments on some of the reasons that they have that they're skeptic over the Chicago Bulls team. And one of the biggest ones, I think just to start, was, of course, the front office and Billy Donovan, the head coach. And that is, I've said it before, that is the one place where if you have a ton of skepticism, it's the hardest to overcome because if you don't trust the people guiding your franchise, It's just, it's hard to have any type of faith over any move that they do. You're going to look at every single move that they do and have some doubt over it. And, you know, that's something that I think is echoed throughout Bulls fandom. If you just kind of pay attention to, like, a lot of things that Bulls fans kind of go back to is, oh, well, they're not going to get this right. Or, oh, you know, yeah, they can't, even if they were to tank, are they going to draft the right person? Oh, they've shown that they can't, you know, find the right person. Oh, they're going to sign people to bad deals. Oh, they're going to let Kobe and Io walk away. They're going to trade. It's just, it always goes back to, ultimately, is that, Anything positive with this team that's a sign of positivity is that you're going to have some doubt in the back of your head when you don't trust your front office, you don't trust your coaching staff, and in some cases you don't trust your players, which we get into. But I think that that, that is one of the biggest reasons for, for skepticism. And, you know, while AK and Eversley showed some initial creation and in how they, you know, bit, built this team, it didn't work. It turned into one play, play off win, right? Not even a series, just one win in the playoffs, a bunch of playing uh, early exits. And, you know, a bunch of disappointment over the course of that time, right? Injuries, which, you know, that isn't necessarily on the front office, but people are going to look at it and say, well, you signed Lonzo Ball, who had injury history. Of course he got injured. Why, why are you guys surprised by that? Even though this injury is different. I don't think anybody could predict an injury like this that he had that kept him out this long. But, you know, all those things are reasons that Bulls fans have to be skeptic over this Chicago Bulls team. And so the skepticism is there. And, you know, with coaching, you guys know I share, shared that. That was Kind of my biggest thing when I kicked off that episode is talking about Billy Donovan and the development, the adjustments and things like that. You know, all those things are, are, are we've, we've talked about ad nauseum and, you know, they're, they're all valid. They're not going to go away anytime soon. And the biggest thing that you can hope from is that this front office has learned from their mistakes. And, you know, maybe maybe we'll see that. Maybe we'll see a start a, a little bit of a change with things with this, uh, you know, kind of going more the direction that they initially said that they were going to go going younger building organically, building through the draft and deve- development. And that kind of went out the window when they looked at these young players and then they made a move for Nikola Vucevic and basically everything after that was getting into us into win now mode. So, you know, I'm not saying that there's that there's any way that they can really quiet that skepticism early in the season. That's a more overtime thing. And, you know, we'll see how they do and how they fare and hopefully it's a lot better than what we're expecting. And, you know, it comes out of that on the right side. Now, as far as with the players, now that's something we can break down a little bit more. Of course, a, bi- a big portion of the skepticism that I've heard was Josh Giddey. Um, you know, with how his playoffs ended and it's basically therefore his run with the Thunder ended, um, you know, it, it's a lot of room to doubt, okay, how is he going to come in here and really help us if he couldn't really do it in the OKC Thunder? And I'll say he did it, yes and no. I think that, um, yeah, his season averages were down last year, but a big part of that was because the ball was taken out of his hands. Um, and, but even then looking at his second year in the league, that 17, almost 17, eight and six season, um, you know, that's, that's one season to look at, but it's not like he did that every single year. So there's some skepticism there, right? There's some things that he has been consistent at. He's always been at bet one of the best at generating open looks for his teammates. He's done that consistently. He's been in the 90th percentile is that, uh, open shots generated for teammates. 
He's been towards in, in the top 10 of triple doubles every year since his rookie year. So there are some things that he's done positively, but the overall impact and the question with every player should be, regardless of the numbers, how well do you impact winning? And that is the question that Josh Giddies is going to have to show here with Chicago. You had a stacked team, a young team in with the OKC Thunder. So even with that, that season that was great season statistically wise, you know, uh, how much was that you? And how much was it you being in a, in a situation where you were able to play better? And so, you know, that's one thing that that skepticism around Josh Giddy is going to be there. And the only way to quiet that is him coming in here, fitting in next to Kobe White um, and them forming a backcourt that we then look at and say, this is a solid backcourt. Is it great? Is it perfect? No. Does it have its holes? Absolutely. But we starting to see the trajectory that we can be on. And I think that's what the Bulls front office is hoping for as well, especially since they have to come up with a contract extension for him by the end of the season. So all those things play into that. Skepticism is there. It's valid. And uh, let's see if Josh Giddy can, can fix those things. Next up, Patrick Williams. And this is, again, this is something that's been here basically every single year since I've had this show, um, is the skepticism around who and what Patrick Williams can be long term. And, you know, is he, gonna, is he somebody that the Bulls should still be invest, as invested in as what they are? And Bulls fans carry a certain level. Like, he was drafted fourth overall. And while, while I've been able to separate that, right, I don't really look at Patrick Williams anymore as that fourth overall pick. I just look at him as being the best. I want him to be the best version of himself, even if that is ends up just being a role player. But the expectations there aren't as easy to just go away and quiet for some people. And who's to say that they should be? Like, Patrick Williams has shown flashes. And there are still a lot of Bulls fans that still really believe in Patrick Williams. And they're looking now at DeMar being gone and saying, hey, this is Patrick Williams' time to show. And hopefully he does. I always go back to that month of December for Patrick Williams. He showed a lot in that time period that was kind of hopefully more like the style we're going to play consistently this season. But even then, Patrick Williams' passiveness, Patrick Williams' you know, lack of drive sometimes, and the fact that he didn't, he didn't really seem to ever take it personally when he's lost his starting position over the last two or three years. So, you know, that's something as well you have to look at there. And you know, Patrick Williams, I've said this many times, and I still hold this opinion, that he, at the bare minimum, is going to be a solid 10-year role player, 10- and 12-year role player in the NBA. And, you know, that that is what it is. Um, But when you're the team that drafted that fourth overall, it comes with a different level of kind of vitriol from some, some fans. And, you know, that is what it is. What can Patrick Williams do to quiet it? Make the month of December last year more like his the, the full season for him. And that doesn't mean every single month, but Make that more like what we get from him this season. I think that'll go a long way. Down around Kobe White. Now, this has been one of the more interesting things, right, is the skepticism around Kobe. There are some Bulls fans that, understandably, again, anything that I say here is understandable, but I'm going to talk about it from both sides. So don't get offended if this is your opinion. I'm just talking about things from all angles, right? They look at the Kobe White thing, and they say that the Bulls could end up doing the same mistake that they made with Zach Levine with Kobe White. And they look at it and say, Kobe isn't a star. We don't think he's going to be a superstar. And for that, at that point, trading Wild's value is high, and let's get the most that we can back for him now. You have some Bulls fans that are on the flip side of that, not necessarily saying that they see Kobe developing into the star superstar, but they look at Kobe and say he's a young guy who, who developed on your team, who had a great season. Why are we looking to trade this guy? Let's see what he's going to become. Let's give him the opportunity to develop here. It's not his fault you only gave him a three-year contract, and now we got to get ready to extend him. And if his play is at that level where he deserves that big contract extension, give it to him and let's see this thing out. And I understand both sides of that. But it is some skepticism over how much Kobe, and then some of it isn't even Kobe, right? His role is changing this year now. He's going from being that on-ball creator that he was at times because he still wasn't fully on ball with DeMar DeRozan to now you're taking the ball out of his hands with Josh Giddy being here and moving him back to the shooting guard position rather than point guard. So. All those things play a big role into some of the skepticism around Kobe, both individually him as a player and also how this team has changed and if that's going to be best for his development to the path that he looked like he was on. So those things are all there as well. And then Modest Buzillis. Um, You know, there are a lot of excitement about Buzillis, I think, initially. The fact that the Bulls were able to get him, his mindset, his mentality, the fact that he's from the Chicago area, all those things play into the part of a lot of fans. And I do think Buzillis is going to be a fan favorite by the end of this. But then. People also look at this and say, well, why did he fall? That shot, he has not shot the ball consistently. Let, yeah, he did it in high school, but hell, we're not talking about high school, right? Now, I do think that he's shown growth every month in the G League last year in that shooting element. He went from playing in high school to playing against grown men, right? So maybe there's a little bit of that in there as well, but 
there's definitely skepticism on exactly who who Modest Busilis is going to be and if he's going to be that player that is going to be a, a building block for the Chicago Bulls or is he going to be another draft pick that's going to be extremely raw that we're not really going to get a lot out of. I think that skepticism around there is valid, but that that's normal skepticism for a rookie, right? If you don't have skepticism for a rookie, don't let the revisionist people tell you there was skepticism around the Bulls drafting Derrick Rose. Not allowed, and I think the majority of them were excited about drafting Derrick Rose, especially him being from Chicago and the fact that how his collegiate career ended in almost winning an NCAA uh, title, but there was some skepticism. Not everybody was all in and thinking that Derrick Rose was going to be what he ended up becoming. There, there wasn't that. Now, by the end of his rookie year, I think a lot of that even more was quieted, but so every rookie is going to have their own skepticism. But then when you also have a front office, again, that you doubt, it's going to add to that skepticism even more about if you got the right guy. And Modest Musilis, whether right or wrong, is going to carry a lot of that into the season. And then the last one to round out the top five, Zach Levine. Is he going to come in here and, and ruin kind of the chemistry? Is he going to be somebody that is more about him than the team? Uh, is he going to be able to stay healthy? Is he even going to be good, right? There's a lot of that going into it. and the trade part so are the bulls even going to be able to get a trade that makes sense in moving off of zach levine all those things exist there for zach levine uh when it comes down to it and you know i i, I understand all of that but those are the top five there were some of course around nick lavusevich of course there was even some around io desumu but those were surprisingly lower especially the vooch i expected more people to write in skepticism about vooch but not that much but let me know what you guys is anybody who did not get a chance to sound off or even hearing that what do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What is your own biggest reason for skepticism with this Bulls team? Not really too much of ownership either, but, you know, we'll see there. But thank you guys. Let me know what you guys think on that down below. All right, let's get into this next topic. Um, this one comes from Bleacher Report. Teams that would like, that would potentially trade for Zach, um, for uh, Tory Craig. Zach Levine was in there. They mentioned the Clippers and a team that becomes desperate. We've talked about that ad nauseum. They also talked about Kobe White and Io DeSumo. Any team looking to go into win now mode. But we talked about both those things a lot. We haven't talked a lot about the, the Tory Craig thing. I think there's an interesting part in this article that I, I, it resonated with me personally. So they did list the Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets as two teams that could look to trade for Tory Craig by the trade deadline. I think that makes sense. You look at Tory Craig, a career role player, a, a really good role player, especially when he's playing next to superstars, his ability to knock down three-point shots, his ability to defend, he can help any contending team. You pair in the fact that he has only a $2.8 million contract next season and it's an expiring deal. Yeah, he is somebody that contenders when they're looking, especially if they have any type of injuries, as you're looking to go into your playoff run, anything like that. If you can add a player like Torrey Craig to your rotation and you're already a contending team, it does nothing but help, you, right? So that all makes sense. And they, uh, you know, like I said, they mentioned the Boston Celtics. They mentioned the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets, a team that's lost some really key role players over the last handful of years. I could see them definitely being interested in Torrey Craig. And the Bulls getting back a second, maybe multiple seconds in a case like that, I think that's a, that's a good trade. And it ultimately comes down, in this article, they pointed out the fact that it would be the Bulls learning from the mistake that they made with Andre Drummond last year. And what have I been saying? The biggest thing that I want to see from this front office is learning from your mistakes. And if they can do that, that's where things start getting into a good rut. Like, this is not uh, uh, any type of thing or talk about Tory Craig, who he is or is not for the Chicago Bulls. It just comes down to an expiring contract that teams could want and that he's going to probably leave. I don't, you know, maybe you do look to bring him back if he's just you just want to keep a veteran around. But, you know, if you know you're not going to probably keep him, retain him this offseason and if he does want to go and join a contender, um, why not get something back for that? Whether it's one second, whether it's two seconds. Yeah, it's not a great asset, but it's an asset. And that is where the Bulls need to be at right now, in my opinion, is getting back assets that you can where you could lose for nothing, right? I'm not saying trade off every member of this team and just focus on assets necessarily, but if you know you're not going to bring guys back or they're not part of your long-term plan and you can get something back for them, you do it. And that's what I want to see this Bulls team learn from their mistakes over the last offseason is doing that. And so let's hope that that's the case. Again, the fact that they pointed out Learning from the mistake that they made with Andre Drummond was the biggest thing in this article to me that resonated with me because I was like, yeah, they did miss out on getting two second round picks as the rumored offer from the Philadelphia 76ers from Andre Drummond. Um, and not to say that those, like I said, not great assets. I think AK's done pretty good with second round picks when you look at IO, when you look at um, 
Julian Phillips. He's done pretty good with the players he's actually drafted in the second round. Um, we still got to wait to see what Julian's going to turn into, but I think he's done really good with Io DeSumo. And so, you know, if you can get that and get them, and again, it's not even necessarily about holding on to those. Those are chips that you can add to other deals if you want to move up in the draft or anything like that. So getting assets back is where, for, for again, for pieces that are not going to be part of your long-term plan, that is where I want to see the Bulls focus on. And let's hope that they do. But let me know what you guys think on that. Do you th- what do you think about the Denver Nuggets, Boston Celtics being listed as two teams that could be interested in Torrey Craig towards the trade deadline? And then overall, of getting anything back for Tory before he has a chance to leave in unrestricted free agency last uh, uh, next next offseason, especially considering that a lot of people did not expect him to pick up his player option and even stay with the Bulls this season. So I think you try to take advantage of that if you can, at least in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think down below. Now, before we get into the last topic, we got one more topic, and then we're going to get into Nikola Vucevic talking about you know the trade rumors with the Golden State Warriors. But Kind of what's popped up, and shout out to Steve-O and, uh, and Kev who talked about this. Uh, you know, I talked about it initially on an episode when it came up, is Zach Levine going to the Pelicans. And now this has turned into, should the Chicago, or would the Chicago Bulls be, be right to get Brandon Ingram? And the thing that I look at it and I say with the Brandon Ingram, and I think I said this when that initial rumor came up of Zach Levine going to the, um, the, the uh, Pelicans for a package around Ingram would be for the Bulls is that Ingram is the type of move that you make when you, when you, if you, if these young players have stepped up enough to where you're going on that play and run, maybe you do that to solidify. Now, I think that you would put yourself right back in a situation where you are trying to get off of Zach Levine's contract partially because of the money. You'd have to turn around and pay Brandon Ingram when you're just trying to get off a big deal. And that may be something that you're not necessarily looking to do um, is do that. Now, Brandon Ingram is 27 years old. He's a damn good player. He's a player that I've, in previous years, would have loved for the Chicago Bulls to trade for while we were still trying to get to that place of being competitive. Now that things have seemed to change a little bit, that's kind of changed my mindset on it. But ultimately, I do think that Brandon Ingram, you add him to this team, he is the type of player then that would, I think, push you to being a a play-in team again. Now, probably staying around that level, but you look at it and say this, all right, you got Brandon Ingram. Even if you do slot him in as the three or you move Patrick Williams back to the three and Patrick and Brandon Ingram become your three and your four, you got Modest Busillas, you got Julian Phillips, like, and I think this whole thing is trying to evaluate the young guys who would be right back jump-starting the clock. What's one thing that I've said about this Bulls team? Stop trying to skip the process. Get back to what you said you wanted to do when you took this franchise over and that's build organically through the draft. Now, once to say that if the Pelicans do offer a trade for Zach Levine and that is the, the best deal, Maybe you look to reroute Brandon Ingram. Maybe you look to force a sign and trade with, it, with him being a free agent at the end of the season. All those things are possibilities. But I just think that when you look at the, the, the thing of you have to get right back into paying Brandon Ingram, it would be different if you had a year or two after this season still on his contract. Maybe that would change some things. But the fact that you would have to get right back to it, and he's probably looking to get paid. That's why the, the Pelicans could be looking to move him. That's something that I think is, is you got to start weighing those, uh, those other things. And I think it really. That would be determined by where this Bulls team is at any particular point in the season. But as always, let me know what you guys think down below. All right, before we go, I want to get into a quote from Nikola Vucevic. So uh, Vuce was asked about the rumors of him being traded to the Golden State Warriors, and he said this. In most cases, those are really just speculations. Maybe the clubs talk. Maybe there was some discussion. I don't know. But if there's a call between teams, it immediately gets out, and people think that's it. I haven't received any information that I'll be traded or anything. The only thing that I got is that I'm staying and that they're counting on me. They want me here. If the results had matched the team's quality, we could have made some achievements and then there wouldn't have been all those stories. We didn't uh, have the season expected. We didn't reach the goal of making the playoff. So it's logical that people would think about changes and those stories start. I honestly don't, uh, don't pay much attention to it because I have no control over it. I'm not a free agent, so I can't choose. So this is a quote from Nikola Vucevic. Now, a lot of people, especially my more, my more knee-jerk reaction Bulls fans, are going to say, but wasn't Vooch the guy who just said that trade rumors and those speculations got to the team a little bit? And you would be right, right, in, in saying that and thinking that. And I think overall, you know, that's, that's, that's a case and something that you can talk about. But the fact that, that Nikola Vucevic has said that the team has told him they want him to be here, they're counting on him, is something that we really haven't heard before because we've heard, hey, the Bulls could be looking to move Vooch. The, the Bulls have even explored some trades for Vooch, which it may be what the Golden State Warriors thing is. But, you know, this is a much better quote than when we heard Vooch say 
oh, yeah, the trade rumors got to us. They really kind of affected us, and it kind of messed up the chemistry of the team. Now, this isn't going to get as much publication because it's not something that can get as negative as a spin, but I think that Vooch has always been the most honest bull. He's been the most open. He's been the more straightforward. And him saying that, yeah, we didn't achieve what we came to achieve, so it makes sense that maybe the teams have talked. And if they talk, it gets out. It happens. It is what it is. Listen, I'm focused on this team. It's basically to paraphrase what he said there. And that is the spot that Nikola Vucevic should be. And listen, this is the NBA. As I said then when the reaction to Nikola Vucevic saying that the trades affected the team, you're going to be in trade rumors more, more years than not in your NBA career. You're going to be trade rumors, especially when you're not a superstar and you're not a franchise player. And even some of those guys get included in trade talk. So, you know, it is what it is when it comes down to it. But Vooch saying that he hasn't heard he'll be traded, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I don't know if Caruso heard that he'd be traded, but then again, he was on TNT that time on Inside the NBA, and he said, well, last season I played for the Chicago Bulls. Almost maybe alluding to maybe that he knew something. So, you know, we'll see. Ultimately, I think this Bulls team is going to do whatever they feel is best. And the question that we have there, is it going to work out the best for the Chicago Bulls? And let's hope that it will. Ultimately, I guess we'll see. But let me know what you guys think on those updated comments from Nikola Vucevic in regards to the trade to the Golden State Warriors, the rumors there. But make sure you guys are following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, but that's thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See you right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.